Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech, and today we are going to be taking a look at the Pi Juice for Raspberry Pi. If you haven't got one of these already, I suggest you get one. So let's get started. So this guy is a portable power platform for your Raspberry Pi. Basically, with this battery, you could keep your Raspberry Pi running. It's basically a hat that goes on top of your Raspberry Pi and it still retains the GPIO pin. So if you're doing projects, you could still use those. The most important thing about this, it includes these three awesome switches. Why I call them awesome is because you can actually program each one of those switches to do something. So before we jump into that, uh, I'll leave a link in the description where you could get this guy. It's from Pi Supply. Now this is a Motorola battery that's about 1800 milliamps per hour. Uh, you could probably buy the same, I think, model number with the higher capacity like 5,000 or something like that so it doesn't include in this pack but you could definitely pick these types of batteries up as far as their appearance goes uh, it fits perfectly on top of this hat do have room to kind of snake a camera cable in there or a display cable now the heatsink itself is marginal like you barely have any clearance if you decide to put a heatsink on and the heatsink that I have on right now is this green Lego block looking like heatsink and once you put this guy on top, you the clearance is very, very tight. Another thing about this guy is if you run it for a long period of time, especially if you're gonna be gaming with the Raspberry Pi or doing something intensive, it does get really warm. What it does have is uninterrupted power. So I could actually plug this guy into the USB port that they have, the micro USB port that they have. And you're gonna see it lights up. Now, once I power the device, you see my Raspberry Pi power on. As soon as I remove the battery, it still stays powered on. And I could plug in another battery and it basically doesn't lose its function. And then I could unplug this, still stays on. Either way, ultimately it's un uninterrupted power and it works constantly. You could actually draw power from here by the GPIO pins, or you could actually have a way of charging it. I think through, uh, you could solder these two points here and you could charge not with USB, but through the G, uh, through these pins. The best feature about this guy, it includes these three buttons that are programmable that you are allowed to do anything you want. You could ultimately have a power button, reset switch, and a sleep switch. Or you could actually program the switch to run a Python script or something, or turn on an LED or, or I don't know, anything you want with it, you could just program it into these uh, GPIO pins. Now let's take a look at the software. So here we have a freshly installed Raspbian desktop. Um, I just did some light settings to it, changed the wallpaper, enabled VNC and SSH and stuff like that. But, all right, to install the PyJuice application, we would need to go into terminal and do a sudo apt-get install PyJuice. Now there's two types, there's the base and the GUI. Obviously we're using the GUI because we have the desktop, so I'm gonna be installing that. Now we can just hit yes and let that install. It would only take a couple of minutes, I believe, maybe less. All right, now that everything's all installed, it's not gonna work yet until you do a reboot. So we're gonna do sudo reboot. All right, so here we have it. We finished rebooting and you get presented with this icon. Now I haven't charged this in a while. Oh, it's only got 5% left. So uh, I'm probably gonna have to charge that soon. Um, you can head over to settings and here is what we're talking about as far as the configuration go. You could actually do wake on alarm. Uh, you could actually turn this on at a specific time, which is a really good feature, especially if you're doing some botting or something. I don't know, something that you need a specific time to start tracking. You have system task. Uh, with watchdog minimum uh, charge threshold and all that stuff so uh, this basically um, tells you what if it's charging if it's not uh, you want to do something when it does trigger a charge um, on low charge like right now since it's low charge i could actually enable this and have it do something like halt the computer or reboot the computer or power off the computer since it's so low or you can make it go to sleep so here are all the settings for that now there are um, a couple of things as far as user functions, uh, you could set up Python scripts here and then include them into what you want to do with the buttons. Uh, the hat itself, if you want to configure this, you go here and you see how there's LEDs, which it does have LEDs on this thing. Uh, you have three buttons up in front, switch one, switch two, switch three. Here you could set your user functions. You see how it says 
uh, user function on switch 3 and you can go back to your user scripts and you know set everything this way and your parameter thresholds and and stuff like that so uh, my first switch is actually set on single press hard power on on long press it will um, halt and in long press 2 it will power off so I'm saying if it's on on uh, and I hold it on for uh, pr if I press it for a long period of time it just basically power off the system and if I just tap it it'll power it on for and then you have double presses and stuff like that so honestly if you want to program some user function like the switch number two which is the middle switch you could program that and do um, something like a function reboot or hard function off so you don't have to hold the button or some sort of user function so anything here basically press release anything you can program these switches and that's what I like about this guy so right now before I run out of juice I'm gonna plug it in and you're gonna see the icon change as soon as I plug it in and here we have it the icon changes that it's charging it notifies the board so uh, I'm not gonna go too deep into it it's pretty much self-explanatory at this point where what you could do here uh, with the buttons now ultimately this guy has been a lifesaver I've been working on the Windows 10 project and a couple of other projects but mainly the Windows 10 project I would have this guy slapped on and just let it run so if I accidentally unplug something or or the power throttled or dipped or something I, I don't freeze this guy was able to maintain power throughout and also anytime if I needed to remove this guy from wherever I'm working and move it to another bench or something it keeps it stays powered on alongside with that is uh, when you have something plugged into a USB port like a hard drive sometimes you might get that thunderbolt on the corner with this guy plugged in you won't see it it supplies enough power to power the USB hard drive and also anything else along with this without showing that lightning bolt so uh, I was very pleased with that uh, I was able to get about I think five hours without charging this uh, which is really impressive I mean I was doing some task not crazy like mining constant 100% CPU usage but uh, normal operations and I was able to last four to five hours with this on one charge so it's very impressive imagine you got like a 5,000 milliamp hour you should be able to get like 16 hours maybe a full night so you could do like a full solar power setup like charges throughout the day and then the night it'll just run off the battery and I'm on a Raspberry Pi 3, which draws a lot of power itself already. Thanks for watching, guys. If you guys enjoyed this review, please hit that like button. If you guys have any questions about this device or what I could do with it, hit up in the comments below. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.